and welcome to urban.org 20 research website, one platform, and three developers. Thank you for taking the time to come to our showcase uh, at the very first session at DrupalCon. I am Farnoosh Johnson. I am an associate director of Drupal development uh, at Urban Institute. I am at uh, Urban since 2017. I build, I, I build, architect, maintain, and support all of our Drupal sites. Hello, everyone. I'm Joseph Patterson. I'm a web applications analyst at the Urban Institute. I started in Aug October of 2022, and my role primarily involves the development and maintenance of Drupal websites for the Urban Institute. Hello everyone, I'm Josh. I'm the Director of Web Development at the Urban Institute and I've worked here since 2021. Uh, I oversee the technical side of web development at the Urban Institute and um, I just wanna say a personal thank you all for coming to the very first session. It's so cool to see that we have more than five people here. We didn't know. Um, all right, I'll hand it off. Oh, actually, I've got the next slide, of course. Um, so we said this was a three-person team in the description. That's false, that's patently false, and I think everybody probably already knew that. Um, we have a whole communications department at the Institute uh, that includes data visualization artists and developers, uh, digital communication specialists, directors. Uh, we have hundreds of researchers and data scientists. Uh, there are, of course, many of you in the audience um, are some of our partners and vendors that we work with. And of course, I want to acknowledge everybody in the Drupal community, um, especially the, those that have mentored us over the years. Uh, Farnoosh and I especially have been in the community for many, many years, and we just think the world of everybody. Um, and uh, with that, we have uh, four parts of this presentation. The first uh, is a question that Farnoosh is gonna try to answer. It's a very tough question. It's a 40 minute presentation. We have 50 minutes on the schedule. Uh, we will make sure we have time for questions at the end. Um, and the keynotes right after this, there's a little bit of a break. So we wanna try to end promptly. Um, of course, once the time's up, you're welcome to come up here and talk to us as much as you want. And I will hand it up to Farnoosh. Thank you, Josh. Well, the as Josh mentioned, the first question is, what is Urban Institute? As an immigrant from a country without a research organization like Urban Institute, um, I found it challenging to explain to my family what the Urban Institute does and how it benefits the society. On the other end, I was thrilled that my work would have a meaningful impact in my new home country. When I was preparing for this talk, initially I had a paragraph that was answering this question that anyone can find on about page on urban.org. After receiving feedback uh, from the team, I decided to come up with an example story to help illustrate the urban's impact. My story is about Maya. Maya is a fictional candidate pursuing a PhD in economic, economics. She's researching the consequences of the pandemic on a rental housing market in America. To kick off her research, she turns to Google to find data and resources to support her research. In this slide, you're seeing that she discovers the Urban Institute's collection of publications, data, and insights on the rental market and home prices. She finds interactive tools and maps like Rental Housing Affordability Tracker, which helps her to explore rental affordability by state, county, and metro area. She has access to various data sets that are expertly analyzed on housing policy and the market. While searching on urban.org, Maya can get a solid grasp of the topic she's researching through evidence-based data sets. Eventually, she can collaborate to address these complex issues in research projects. This is just one example of the many ways that Urban Institute wants to make a difference in the society. 
what the Urban Institute isn't just for research, uh, research groups like our friend Maya. Imagine you are a congressperson or working in a senator's office, and you're preparing for, uh, to plan a strategy or a, um, a policy discussions. Our research could be your secret tool to your compelling argument. But today, we'll, our focus main, uh, remains on Maya's journey, not because the others are not important, but to show you that what we do at Urban isn't just about high profile policy discussions. It's about helping folks like Maya who are digging deep into the numbers, new insights, making new discoveries, and working their brains off to get a better grip of on complex issues. She's making a difference, just like we strive to do every day at Urban. We'll check in with Maya later when I look into the features we added to our website and see how those features help Maya during her research. At Urban, like any other organizations, we have different offices like technology and data science, communications, or human resources. We also have 12 research and policy centers. Our technology and data science has a small team of three developers who are presenting today. We create the web dev team. The team is responsible for the, web, uh, for the development of our website. In the communication office, we have our main content editors. We're lucky to have them here with us today. We call them our super users because they're just pretty super at what they do. So welcome. And um, also we have our product manager, we have our designer and our uh, director of digital communications. And they are considered the web dev team in the com uh, communication department. So in total, there are 10 of us that are core contrib contributors to our Drupal projects. In addition, we have a team of data visu visualization developers is uh, who are responsible for creating visual representations of our complex data sets. Ultimately, all of our work is visual. We also have user experience specialists in the tech and data science office. We, um, they join our web dev team, spring planning and projects based on the need um, and occasionally based on the project's need. Well, we have a lot of work and we are not a big team. So um, I'll, give, uh, I'll, send, I'll have Joseph to explain how we're managing all of this work. Okay. All right, thank you, Farnoosh. Mm -hmm. All right, so now let's delve a little deeper uh, into what our work is. Um, we strive to effectively manage projects and track issues with, within our organization. We adapt the Agile methodology for building and maintaining Drupal websites. This approach involves organizing our work into bi-weekly sprints, allowing for iterative development and efficient progress. Drupal serves as our platform of choice for website development, and we leverage the robust features and flexibility of Drupal to create powerful and customizable websites that meet our stakeholders' needs. We ensure effective communication and issue tracking uh, to ensure effective communication and issue tracking, we utilize a variety of tools. Uh, we understand that the stakeholders and team members may have different preferences, so we strive to accommodate them all. We hold meetings and discussions in tools that best support each team's workflow and communication style. Right, so our team is comfortable with Pantheon as our hosting platform, so we rely on uh, on it for website development or hosting. Uh, Lando helps us create and manage development, our, our development environment efficiently, and we utilize com Composer to streamli streamline our dependency management process for our websites. Uh, Urban takes security very seriously, so we employ 
a web application firewall, and DDoS protection for enhancements in security. Uh, it also provides additional features or additional measures, uh, which include geofencing and traffic rules. Uh, but Josh will delve into this um, a little bit more in a later section. So now let's shift our focus to how we handle documentation within our organization, um, as it is a very pivotal role in our projects. We are committed to creating comprehensive and document. Com we're committed to creating comprehensive documentation for our projects and specific features. Uh, one way we achieve this is by attaching readme files to our projects, including our custom modules. Uh, these files serve as a valuable source of information and we prioritize keeping them updated uh, within with any change in code. Uh, maintaining current and uh, detailed documentation is very crucial uh, given the various develop developers that join our projects at different stages. So this ensures smooth transition and a shared understanding amongst our team. For meetings and general communications, we make effort to effectively manage across the different cities uh, and time zones. So due to our, our team's colla our collaboration with uh, teams primarily located in, in um, the Eastern time zone, we establish core hours that respect and accommodates everyone's respective time zones. So this approach ena enables seamless communication and collaboration uh, regardless of the geographical and time differences. Um, I'd also like to highlight uh, an initiative called No Meeting Tuesdays, um, which Urban has implemented to combat Zoom fatigue as well as foster um, focused work time. So this initiative uh, aims to provide dedicated time for deep work uh, and uninterrupted focus, allowing our teams to meet significant, to make significant prog progress for tasks being worked on. So next, we'll talk about, uh, we'll next we'll explore how we're advancing our strategies with some key initiatives. So first we adopt, implement and improve our process to drive greater efficiency and effectiveness. Secondly, we embark on Drupal 10 upgrades to leverage the latest features and enhancements of the platform. And lastly, uh, we implement automated testing, automated testing using tools like VHAT to ensure robust quality assurance. And by adopting, implementing, and improving our strategies, we can optimize our operations and achieve better outcomes. This commitment to continuous improvement enables us to adapt um, changes, adapt to change in needs, and maintain a competitive edge. The Drupal 10 upgrades will help provide us with enhanced functionality and security while future-proofing our digital infrastructure. These upgrades ensure that we can leverage full p the full potential of Drupal's capability for our projects and initiatives. With automated testing, we can streamline our testing processes, improve efficiency, and identify any issues at early stages, and VHAT helps us validate the functionality and consistency of our digital assets. All right, so now we'll look, we'll explore some of Urban's flagship sites. Right. So in 2020, in 2020, we've successfully launched uh, WorkRise using Drupal 8, and this marked a significant milestone for our team uh, and demonstrated our ability to leverage the power and capability of Drupal and delivering exceptional websites. So WorkRise.org is a site that focuses on expanding opportunity and economic mobility for workers. And in 2022, we experienced an impressive 322,000 unique sessions, uh, indicating a strong interest in our, in our work. Moreover, in the ongoing pursuit of knowledge sharing, we proudly launched a work working knowledge page in 2023. I would also like to take a moment to acknowledge the valuable contribution um, by phase two with the expertise and support we were able to achieve our goal 
and has all over the overall experience of the site. So a special shout out for their valuable contribution. All right, so the next site is policyforaction.org. And back in 2016, we accomplished a major achievement by launching policyforaction.org uh, using Drupal 8. This website serves as a platform that awards millions of dollars for um, funding for research, which plays a crucial role in supporting and informing a culture of health and racial equity. So by providing funding to impactful research, we contribute to positive change and an, uh, advancement in these areas. In 2022, the website policyforaction.org attracted an impressive 26,000 unique impressions or sessions, and this significantly leveraged the engagement, uh, and it indicates the interest and relevance of the research and resources available on the platform. It also demonstrates the impacts of our efforts in reaching and connecting with a diverse audience. So as part of our commitment to technology advancement, we recently upgraded from Drupal 9 to Drupal 10 for policyforactions.org. And this upgrade enhances the functionality and user experience, um, allowing us to better serve our visitors and partners. This transition to Drupal 10 also signifies our dedication to staying at the forefront of technology and continuously improving our online presence. Um, I would also like to express our sincere appreciation for Canopy for their valuable con assistance throughout the upgrade process, uh, the expertise and support um, definitely helped in the success of implementing the transi transition to Drupal 10. So we are grateful for their collaboration and continue and contribution that they made to the website's improvements. All right, so another site that we maintain is Urban, uh, Urban uh, another site maintained by Urban Institute is taxpolicycenter.org. And taxpolicycenter.org has an interesting history so it actually originated back in 2002, um, and it was using Code Fusion at the time, which showcased our expertise in that technology at the time. Um, however, as our needs um, in the industry evolved, we made a strategic move to Drupal, to Drupal, uh, which helped us to leverage the flexibility and scal scalability of the platform. So, this website plays a pivotal role in. Um, informing decisions about critical physical issues and supporting better policy outcomes. Um, through comprehensive analysis and research, uh, the site empowers policymakers and stakeholders to make informed choices. Um, in 2000 2022, the website received an impressive 1.69 million unique sessions, um, and this substantial level of, of engagement demonstrates the relevance and impact of the resources and information provided by taxpolicycenter.org. So uh, it underscores the influence of the website, that the, inf that the website has, has in shaping discussions and decisions around physical matters. And to ensure that we remain at the forefront of this technology, we also plan to upgrade the site from Drupal 10 to Drupal from Drupal 7 to Drupal 10 soon, and this upgrade will help us to actually enhance the functionality and performance and the user experience of the site as a whole, so, um, yeah. So, also, this site was um, worked on in effort with uh, Phase 2 for, they helped with um, ma maintaining support for the site and also for, um, improvements of the site as well. All right, so last but not least, um, urban upward mobility, uh, upward mobility that urban.org, uh, it launched in 2021 using Drupal 9, and this website is dedicated to the concept of upward mobility and seeking um, provided valuable insights and resources for individuals striving for improved uh, socioeconomic status. Um, upward mobility serves as a hub for information and tools to support individuals in their journey towards uh, upward mobility. Uh, play on the words there. 
Um, it offers a wealth of resources, including research findings, uh, policy recommendations, and interactive tools, all aiming at fostering economic advancements and social mobility. Um, I'm pleased to share that Upward Mobility also has been successful in attracting significant engagements as well. Um, and this plays a vital role in, in tackling the critical challenges related to upward mobility. Um, and we extend our heartfelt gratitude to Farm One for their valuable contributions to enhancing the site's success as well. So now I'll hand it back to Farnoosh and she'll take a little bit of a deep dive into urban.org. Uh, she'll provide a comprehensive overview of the platform and its functionality. So over to you, Farnoosh. Thank you, Joseph. Yep. <coughs> so um, as um, Joseph already mentioned, we have a um, dedica dedicated website at Urban for each of our funded projects. Some of them that Joseph um, uh, walked through and, and others like boost um, technical education collab and this is a carrier and technical education collab, housing crisis research collaborative, and several others. We also have two flagship sites, taxpolicycenter.org and urban.org. Last year, we um, relaunched our urban.org, and um, which was, uh, the process was including the redesign and relaunching, uh, migrating over 120 thousand different uh, types of content, including files from Drupal 7 to Drupal 9. Um, this effort was the result of, uh, of many years of work um, across multiple teams. Um, the previous version of urban.org was, which was on Drupal 7, was based on, um, the site was structured using content type. Uh, for instance, a publication was a content type, and uh, it was referenced to a policy center, which was also a content type. So, um, if you so we listed all publications that was t uh, that on the policy center landing page, um, if they are tagged with the policy center. So it was a lot of reputation to structure the site. Um, so what one of our improvements was um, um, using um, the taxonomy term to um, improve the structure of the site. So now we're using taxonomy terms to create landing pages for each policy center. This allows us to link publications to other content more accurately and, um, and to, the corresponding, to the corresponding policy center making it easier for our user and super users to manage and um, find what they want. Um, this is from our lead urban.org content editor, which is us. And um, this new taxonomy structure significantly enhances the visibility of uh, pages on the site, offering multiple ways to find content and making it more accessible. Additionally, the overall site structure is intuitive and user-friendly, making it easy to train new users who can quickly become familiar with the site. Another improvement and feature we added to our new site was um, the menu system. The old urban.org, like many large organizations, had a lot of navigation bar, navigation bars. We had primary, secondary, um, footer, and on-page navigation that went um, many layers deep. On the new site, we reduced uh, the navigation to three primary links at the top and uh, organized a lot more items in the uh, expander hamburger menu. At Urban, um, we often uh, need to, uh, for a number of pages to live and to be interconnected with each other um, So um, on the site. So we use a node hierarchy module, which provides an entity reference field that we call it parent field. And uh, this parent field allows our um, 
site manager and content editor uh, to reliably and quickly build sessions on the site that are interconnected with, uh, with each other. We call them projects or apps. We use this field uh, to render tokens uh, for path to help with search API index and also for breadcrumbs. So we're using um, in different um, scenarios as well. The next one uh, is how we're handling our landing pages on urban.org. <coughs> with, uh, with the new site, site manager have the power to create and manage these landing pages without a need of um, us, a developer. This has given them a greater control over the content displays on these landing pages. We have implemented a variety of custom blocks um, that they can place it as an inline blocks inside the layout builder. And uh, these um, custom blocks are very customizable. Uh, they can, uh, the content editors or site managers, they can take advantage of the um, different view modes and um, or they can choose the number of um, content they want to uh, display or if they just want to display a featured content. So um, this uniformity is uh, in how we are managing and structuring this uh, landing pages. Um, give the site manager and content editors to manage thousands of pages without having to remember different ways of setting up or editing up uh, editing a page. On, as an example, on our previous site, um, on Drupal 7, we had different ways of um, setting up these landing pages. And all of them, they need a developer to come in and then create those pages. For example, we had one landing page uses panelizer, another one uses um, custom panes or display suites. So it was a lot of ways. And just remember, just to having to remember different ways was not an easy way. Um, so urban.org um, is hosted on Pantheon. And we're using Pantheon Solar 8 servers um, for, our search, um, for our search functionality. Um, we're indexing um, over 20,000 pieces of content, including full text uh, PDF search. The output of the search is based on relevancy or can be sorted by date. We have several filtering options we that are facets, so um, they're allowing users to filter the search results based on the authorship, content type, based on the um, subclassified publications and also taxonomy terms. After we launched the site, <coughs> site we added a new feature to our search functionality and that, was, that is called autocomplete um, search. So this, um, this feature enhanced um, the website search, search, search functionality by a lot. So users, um, they can um, type um, their input in the, user, uh, in the input search um, section without needing to in, uh, hit enter or any page reload. You get um, a five, um, the most five relevant co uh, content and then a button at the, at the end to take you to the search uh, path for filtering more results and um, on the search path. So going back to Maya, Maya used this functionality, the search autocomplete to look for the rental housing. She clicks on a rental housing. This is a taxonomy term landing page. She clicks on the um, a content, a publication. And then she scrolls down to the bottom of the page. We have more. Um, Ta uh, we're using a taxonomy terms, more tags on the bottom of the page to take you to more related resources of the topic you're researching. So that helps Maya in her research and um, to pull a list of all uh, related resources she's looking for. 
urban design system. So before I dive into the new design system, um, let me um, <coughs> review the old, old way, old one. Um, so on previous projects, we used Pattern Lab uh, for our front end design system, which was based on the atomic design uh, uh, concept. This approach is, was great at the time because uh, it allowed us to create a small reusable component in pattern-driven approach. However, there was one limitation uh, that we could only use these um, uh, small reusable components inside our Drupal projects. Like basically, whatever it renders um, the twig or mustache. Um, so that's why when we, we were um, in the process of redesigning the urban.org, we knew we needed a new design system that was more flexible and could be used across any applications at urban and not just Drupal. With the help of um, phase two, the agency that was uh, helping us to, um, with the rebuild of the urban.org, we created a new design system that uses a JS framework, stencil JS, to create the, uh, the uh, custom, to generate custom web components. That, um, these, these are all also reusable components that, you, uh, that can be rendered on any template that output the HTML format. We call it Linden, and named after the US President Lyndon B. Johnson. Under his presidency, the Urban Institute was established. In addition to Stencil JS, we're using Storybook JS to showcase our uh, web components uh, to our QC a team and our designers before we implementing those components into our site. Um, our senior director of digital communication once said, using the components designers and site producers can create essentially any page layout they can dream, dream of. There is so much more complexity to our design system that we could easily fill up the entire session um, discussing about it. But also we had um, several pain points that uh, we, need, uh, we still need to tackle. Well, I'll be more than happy to dive into more of the design system question at the end of the session. For now, I'll pass the mic over to Josh. Uh, he's going to talk more about the stats, funding, security, and a lot more. Over to you. Okay, uh, thanks again for everybody coming here. Um, we're about 33 minutes in, just for everybody to note. We're gonna talk about some statistics. Um, oh, I'm in control now, so I can do that, cool. Uh, so we're near the end. Um, seen here are, uh, is a graph that, let me tell you, if you work at, uh, Institute where we have data visualization artists. There is like a 17 page document that describes how you make graphs in Microsoft Excel. So good luck making a graph for a presentation. Um, these are the websites. Um, and I think I followed all of the coloring requirements that we have at Urban Institute. Um, all 24 websites are up there. Some of them are duplicated because we have Drupal 7 sites that are still live, Drupal 10 sites that are about to go live. And I wanted to get those Drupal 10 sites on this graph. Um, many of them are gonna go static uh, and many of them are migrating soon. You can see we have a ton of websites that are either going to be migrated soon or already migrated and just haven't gone, haven't launched yet. And um, those, that, that is one of the main problems that we have at Urban is keeping these websites up to date. We've only shown you a couple of them, but we have 24-ish that are running Drupal, um, and we have far more than that, hundreds of them that are not running Drupal, um, and of course, technology keeping it secure, it's very hard to do that. Um, so this is a huge, um, 
this is, this is going to be a huge win for us because most everything that was initially developed at Urban was Drupal 7. And getting from Drupal 7 to the next iteration of Drupal is a big deal. And from that point on, it's less of a big deal. And even further on, so Drupal 9 to 10 is even easier. Very excited once we get everything to Drupal 10 by the end of the year. Knock on wood. Um, w it'll just be, we'll just stay on the latest um, minor release for all these websites. And all of our migration woes will be gone. That's, that's actually the hope. And we're already starting to see that almost all of our Drupal 9 sites were very easily upgraded to Drupal 10 in a matter of days. The Drupal 7 urban.org migration, how long did that take, Farnoosh? Was that like two years? Three, three or four years it took. Um, we're gonna upgrade urban.org from Drupal 9 to 10 in like maybe two weeks. And that's a big deal and that's fantastic. And hopefully this is essentially the evergreen Drupal future that we've all dreamed of. Um, I wanna share some aggregate website traffic numbers. The, the session was called One Platform uh, because we use Drupal, that's the platform. There's no like technology that's connecting it all, but it impacts the whole institute. So um, we have 19 websites that have Google Analytics. I'm actually gonna need to look into that because apparently some of our websites aren't using it or I don't have access, so that's kind of interesting. Um, over 2022, and the, all these numbers are from 2022 because it was a non-moving time target and it encompasses all of all of a normal year of traffic. Um, so all the Christmas traffic and everything that we didn't get is in there. So 5.98 million unique sessions. What's a unique session? Joseph was talking about it a little bit ago. It's one person on one device at a single time. They might visit the website at a couple different pages. That's what we're counting here. I feel like that's a pretty good representation of how many people have gone to these websites, not necessarily um, how many hits that we're getting. Uh, we get, on average, across all of these websites, 2.3 pages per session. So two or three pages, somewhere around there. That sounds about right. That's good. We're getting pretty good engagement. And we have uh, a minute and 30, 34 seconds, on average, to keep these eyeballs interested. And that's, I don't know, I'm not a Google Analytics person, but that doesn't seem very mu like very much time. Um, I did the math, I think I did the math. This is either, this is either right or wrong, I guess. But uh, 682 sessions per minute of 2022. That feels like a lot. Uh, there's a lot of people going to these websites across the board. There's like maybe three websites that have the majority of the traffic. Um, it's a long tail though that keeps going out there. And finally, uh, an another interesting stat is we have 187 million Google impressions. That's one of our websites um, showing up on Google results for all of 2022. Um, I think the click-through rate, rate was like really low though. Um, not Certainly not driving 187 million views to our website, that's for sure. Uh, some more uh, interesting uh, looks into these statistics. Uh, we had 3.4 million unique sessions on urban.org alone. Um, so we're getting quite a bit of traffic there. Uh, the longest uh, time per session was upward mobility. So if you're on upward mobility, you're more likely to s stay there twice as long as any of our other websites. That's, I don't know, I just find these kind of things kind of interesting. Like look behind the scenes a little bit. The most pages per session, I have no idea why, are next50.urban.org. If you go on that website, man, you're clicking all kinds of stuff. I'm not sure why, but eight pages per session, that's pretty interesting. And um, the most clicks on Google results, this is not a Drupal site, by the way. TPC calc marriage calculator.urban.org is like our number one Google result. Not sure why. Um, maybe people are just looking for calculators. Um, I wanted to dive a little bit into the urban.org content that we have as well, just to give you kind of a sense of the amount of content we have on urban.org. So there are 2,900 or so healthcare publications. And this is encompassing, um, I don't have it on the slide here, but it's encompassing most of our articles uh, on urban.org have a publication date of 2012 or newer. And we do, I think it's like three or 400 publications a year. So it's not one every day. Um, 
sometimes it's some years it's less than a hundred and some years it's far more than that pandemic we had far more than that um, but it, it is a pretty steady pace almost every other day we have something new our uh, web production team could probably tell a little bit more about that uh, 2135 taxes and budgets uh, 2000 and usually these are all I chose some um, taxonomy terms that are unique to each other so this kind of represents a bigger picture of our taxonomy that we have on the site social safety nets pretty big uh, almost everything's tagged as research that's kind of interesting um, uh, 3619 blog posts of those blog posts 3297 are urban wire blog posts and none of those blog posts are tagged research so we just have a lot of content getting developed. We have a lot of writers. We have a lot of researchers trying to communicate and trying to connect to an audience that's actually pretty big. Um, I want to shift a little bit here and talk a little bit more about security. And uh, security is very important. Joseph talked a little bit about our web application firewall. Very interested if you guys have other experiences with that, maybe at our Q&A. Um, we had an incident response um, that I, I don't have all the details very clear in my mind, and it's probably good that I'm not sharing specifics, but it was, I think, last November, uh, urban.org went down, and it went down because uh, we were getting tons of traffic. Pantheon got a hold of us and said um, about a week before it went down that we were clocking in over a million views a month, which is far more than we normally would get, uh, considering we only had 3.98 unique people, 3.98 million unique people in the year alone. A million a, a month is crazy. Um, we're not really sure because, you know, it's people that are trying to take down websites don't tell you what their agenda was or what they're trying to accomplish. But uh, it was a continuous traffic load that was like five to 10,000 uh, hits a minute sustained for, um, I want to say it was at least three weeks. And within the first week, we just, we were fine. The website was loading just fine, no problems. Uh, Pantheon got a hold of us and said, hey, your database is about to fill up past what we're going to support. And it was, uh, it was almost 500 gigabytes of logs. Our, our log table was apparently the bottleneck or the hair that broke the camel's back or whatever you want to say about that. But um, we uh, cleared the log table. Uh, we couldn't because the site was down because we were getting hammered with traffic as well. And it, it was a combination of traffic coming in and couldn't turn the website off so that we could access the database long enough to actually clear it out. Ultimately, we were able to use a drush command to turn the website to um, maintenance mode and uh, gave it a minute to breathe. And, <laughs> and then we uh, were able to clear the logs and that gave us about an hour of time and then the logs filled right back up again. Um, ultimately, the final solution was twofold. We went over to Redis. We weren't using Redis, that was my mistake. We weren't using Redis, and uh, we weren't using um, uh, a web application firewall. We did not have any any way to mitigate DDoS. It just hadn't happened before on urban.org. And now we're set up with uh, firewall across many, not all, I'm not gonna tell you which ones aren't, uh, many of our websites now have um, the capability to deny traffic uh, when it starts to look funny. And there are a couple countries where uh, most of that traffic was originating. We looked into it. Um, but ultimately, once we turned on the Redis caching and we cleared our logs a final time, we stayed online for five or six days before we got the web application firewall set up. And we were able to maintain some sort of interactivity on the website for most of the, uh, for most of the time. And that was fantastic. Thank you, Jerry, for that little note there. I'm gonna jump into uh, website funding here real quick, uh, and then hopefully we'll have some time for a Q&A. Uh, we do, the funding at Urban is interesting. I'm still learning not-for-profit space. I've only been here for two years. I came from a for-profit world. Um, many of our websites are project-based. 
and those projects have budgets, and maybe the budget is a million dollars to study something, and a portion of that budget goes into a website to share that. And the majority of those projects that are bigger have their own website. That's why we have so many websites. Um, some of them don't. Some of them just end up on urban.org, and they take advantage of the fire hose of traffic that we get there. A number of other websites are collaborations with other uh, institutes, for example, taxpolicycenter.org is a collaboration with um, Brookings Institute. We are partnered together. Our team handles the website. Brookings handles a lot of the research effort, and but w it's a collaboration, of course. There are other websites that are collaborative as well. Um, and we also have a number of internal websites that support the, the um, organization as well. So there, there's tons of websites that come, that get funding from various locations. Either it's overhead, that's the internal websites, or it's funding based, that's the collaboration and project based. We also have a lot of maintenance. It, as you might imagine, there's a lot of websites to maintain, a lot of hosting that we have to deal with. Thankfully, we have one host um, for almost everything. And uh, a lot of domains, that it's funny, a domain's $14 for two years, but usually, um, those always seem to be the emails that catch everyone off guard when they come through, though. I don't know why. Uh, that takes us to the end of our presentation. There um, were four parts. We answered, Furnish answered the question, what is the Urban Institute? Uh, Joseph talked a little bit about what we do. Furnish took you into urban.org. I wrapped it up with some statistics. And that's the end of our presentation. Thank you so much for coming. We're going to stick around for a few minutes if you have any questions. Thanks a lot. <laughs> and you can go and grab these slides um, if you go to urban.org slash 2023 DrupalCon slides. Does anybody have a question? Yes. Yeah. Speak up and we'll repeat it in the mic. Okay, the question is, we have 24 websites. How in the world do you manage to keep them up to date? I, I'm, I'm happy to answer that. Okay, uh, you wanna give it a shot? Well, you. Okay, I kinda, <laughs> I'm curious what she would say, because my answer is we don't. <laughs> we, I would love to know if anyone has ideas. Uh, no, we're uh, spreadsheets. Uh, we talk about things that are um, um, big upgrades Frequently, we do meet every two weeks to talk about all of the website projects. We just don't have a big, big enough team to effectively um, keep everything as up to date as we'd really want. One of our major goals for this year is to get everything to Drupal 10, and then keeping up to date from there should be a composer update away from maintaining happiness in Zen-like serenity. That's the idea. Any other questions? You have to repeat the question. Oh, have you been, um, have you considered using the Sentry, the yeah. external, external login log provider? Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't have the answer. We have not. Um, so. I've, I've looked into it. It's expensive. That's the problem. Sentry does not have an open source foundation version. Oh, okay. So Interesting. Yeah. Okay, so Sentry mm -hmm. opens an open source self-hosted version. I'm just repeating it for the recording. That's really interesting, okay? Any other questions? Sure, right there. So I, I actually think the website is very sincere, very well-written. Thank you. Um, I think most of the things that uh, you said kind of fall in line to think of the composer and the rest of things that you were asking um, uh, is it included to the uh, I'm going to repeat the question, then hand it off to Farnoosh. And unfortunately, that's the last one that we can do mic'd, but we'll stick around for any other questions we have. Question was, 
interesting that we went from Pattern Lab to Stencil JS, and I don't remember the final that. Did we do the design work in house? Um, yeah. So our new design system is also based on the at atomic design approach. So basically, smaller components. So it kind of have that atomic design approach, but just uh, technology has dif uh, is different. Um, yeah, so that time we, uh, we worked with phase two technology, um, the agency that helped us with, uh, with the rebuild um, and the redesign. At the beginning as well, the project of urban.org, which um, was started, Linden was started based on the, um, during that time. Um, it took uh, multiple years across multiple teams, so we had phase two, um, some of their front end to help us at that time, and uh, but eventually um, towards the end when we launched, it was only in-house uh, developers and, but your question was about designers, correct? Um, we did have, we do have designers and yes, our designer in-house in the comp t uh, comps team, uh, she was, um, working on the design. Cr the Christina building. Baird designed it, and she's an incredible designer. We're very lucky to have her. All right, thank you guys so much for coming. We're gonna turn off the mics. Come on up if you have questions. Thanks a lot. <laughs>